Okay, what's going on, guys? And welcome to a brand new episode of Energized. Today, we have a very special guest on the show. We have Ireland's next Olympic gold medalist, Reese McLennigan. How are you doing, Reese? How's it going, guys? Thanks for that intro. Next Olympic gold medalist. I like it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, like, you know, I have to be you up. You know what I mean? You, you're, I actually think you're our best hopeful going into the Olympics. Next year it is now. Yeah. Um, might as well get straight into it. How does that actually affect you? The Olympics being moved to 2021, is that a positive thing? Another year's training? Or is that a bad thing that you're looking forward to? You were sort of ready to peak this year? I mean, uh, of course, I was. <laughs> I was looking forward to it being this year and it was quite strange having to switch that mentality of, you know, it was, it was going to be in what, four months time and now it's 16 months time it's going to be. So uh, it's weird. It's weird for my brain to switch that mentality uh, because you kind of have to hold back a bit now. So I was, I was full throttle for that, for that July Olympic games, but now I have to kind of take a step back a little bit and, you can't you can't be full throttle for sixteen months because your brain just gets all messed up that way. Um, fair to say, like I've never had to peak for something uh, as serious as that in my life. So, like I, I can only imagine it, it's it, it's a big struggle, and especially when you're doing a a one man event. You know what I mean? You're you're not in a team, so it's just your preparation gets changed. But yeah. tell us why the pommel horse and how did you get into it? Um, I mean. I started out gymnastics when I was six. So I went, when you start gymnastics at that young age, you do all of the events. So there's six events and I done all of the events. Up what until, exactly are they? Yeah, Just for people don't the, know. So the floor exercise, the pommel horse, the still rings, the vault, parallel bars and the horizontal bar. So, you know, there's six events that you can compete in the all around competition, which is all of them scores combined. Um, but then along the way, people kind of just individualize their their apparatus that they're best at. Mine was the palm horse from since I can ever remember. I, I always just gravitated towards the palm horse um, because it was just so much better than all the rest of the kids. And then that in itself inspired me to be a bit more better. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just it's it's elevated to where it is now. Uh, what age did you actually start doing gymnastics at? Started at six years old. So at that age, up until I was, I, I still do all of the all six events, uh, but I just don't compete it. Uh, it's it's not because I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be contesting for a medal on the other events. So there's no point in getting injured and risking that injury uh, when you know I could bring home a medal for the country on on the palm horse. But you know I, you do start out learning all six events just to kind of see what one you're best at. Yeah. Excuse my ignorance on it, but do they do like a decathlon except with the six events and someone competes in all of them? Is that, is that a thing? Is that, would you yeah, give that a go? That's, that's the, yeah, I have competed in all six events uh, up until mm. uh, my last all around competition was at the Commonwealth Games. I came 10th. Mm. So that, that is, that's the all around competition when mm. the gymnasts compete on all six events. Oh, sorry. I just knew you was Mr. Pommel Horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean that that is the that's the main one. So as I said, like I I can make the final and and like come top ten at the minute on the all around competition. But there's there's not really much point in risking injury um and sacrificing you know a potential medal on pommel horse. Gold medal. Gold medal. Thank you for the captain. <laughs> yeah, in fairness, I watched you doing and like you're absolutely flawless on it. And it's one of those things where. I always find the sport slightly strange where you're judged, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. So, like, it, it, does it feel weird that your medal is in someone else's hands to say, actually, he was the best? Does that feel weird? It is. It is um, and that, that's the tricky thing about the sport. It can be, it, it's a subjective sport, so it's, it's subject to the judges watching. It's quite similar to boxing. You know, in amateur boxing, it, it quite often goes to the, to the judges' scorecards and then, Sometimes there's a there's a controversial take on it, um, but uh, you know I, I always wanted to leave the judges um, knowing that I was that I was the best, like way ahead of the field, so that there was no controversy whatsoever. Yeah. What age re were you reached when you realised you were actually like way superior than most people? Um, I'd say I was. I think I was 15 at the, I was competing at the British Championships one year uh, as a guest. And there's, there's this final where I, cause I was still a junior at this time. 
um, there was this final where all age groups can qualify to the final. And at that time, the two best in the world, so Lewis Smith and Max Whitlock, um, they were competing in the final and I placed on the podium just behind them. No way. And that was kind of a realization. So it was on it was on TV, it was on BBC, it was a big thing. It was like my first big event. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, pretty amazing. that's pretty amazing. That I was able to pull off that routine uh, at 15 years old and place behind them big, the, the best in the world. That was like a realization for me and do something special. It really was. It, it, it must be one of those things where you, you watched uh, uh, Lewis Smith and uh, Max Whitlock as, as you were probably growing up and went, geez, they're, they're incredible. And now you know, you're probably one of Max Whitlock's biggest rivals right now, which is probably crazy to think. And then Lewis Smith is almost like a celebrity in his own right. He does a lot of like sort of TV shows nowadays. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, which route do you see yourself more going down? You know, going for your uh, Olympic dreams? Like you have the potential to do what? Three three Olympics maybe? Yeah, for sure. Um, that's definitely the route I see myself going down is continuing that Olympic dream. Um, hopefully all the other Olympics go to, go to plan and go to the right date. Um, but it's <sighs> Yeah, I, I could see myself doing three Olympics for sure. And the question, see the way uh, the Olympics is in 2021 next year. Is there no Olympics then in 2024? Or will it, all the Olympics get pushed back? Or just this no, one pushed back? I'd say it would just be this one to be pushed back. And then the next Olympics is 2024 and then 2028. Brilliant. And then by 2028, you'll be what? 28, 29? Yeah, 28, 29. Yeah, that, that's that's grand, like three Olympics. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. But not many people get to do three Olympics. Uh, no. The question I ask everyone who goes to the Olympics, are you getting the Olympics tattoo? Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> but I need to, I want to go there first um, to, to consolidate it um, and compete. Yeah. And then after after the Olympics, I'll come home and get, get an Olympic tattoo. I'm still undecided where I'm going to get it, though. So I'm thinking my forearm, maybe. <laughs> and I, I have another question for you, right? If you were to get it, would you get it slightly differently if you won the gold medal to have a gold medal dangle out of your uh, Olympic mm, rings? Or maybe make the rings all one. gold? Yeah. Yeah, it could do, could do. Uh, something to think about. Maybe it'll, yeah. it'll come when I'm standing on the podium listening to the national anthem. You, you know, what, when you win your gold medal or before the Olympics next year, we'll have you back on the show and then we can re rediscuss the tattoo. Yeah. yeah, we'll come up with ideas okay. for you. Yeah. Um, we'll have we'll have a, we'll have the freshest tattoo in County Down. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Yeah, are you are you still loving, living up in County Down? Yeah, I'm at my parents' house right now in County Down. Um, but I'm I'm pretty much living in Dublin and training in Dublin. Um, at the National Sports Campus, so I'm just living just off campus, but it's very close by, so it's it's a perfect situation for training. Yeah. When did you start no. first start training there? Um, it's, it's coming close to two years now, uh, so I moved down there uh, when, the, when I wasn't able to train, there wasn't any clubs in Northern Ireland, so I moved down to the, to the sports campus and it was a perfect situation, like the, the gym down there is world class, the, the institute, the sports institute, they have physios and doctors and nutritionists, so it's just, it was a no-brainer really to go down there for the preparation for Tokyo. Yeah. Uh, how, how like how much have you improved since you started training there as well? Oh, a huge amount, huge amount. And it, I, I did like, because I had the shoulder surgery last year. It was so good to be based down there with the physios and doctors and all around me, um, helping me with the rehab program because it was, it just the the rehab program just went so smoothly and I just came back at the right time, you know, for that World Championships last year. Um, showcased everything that we've been working on that whole year um, and yeah it, it was a perfect plan really uh, How exactly did you get injured as well Reese? because it seems like you fully recovered from it as well Yeah so I it was pretty much just stress so the there's a, a joint cushion on my shoulder called the labrum and it tore um, I did I wouldn't have necessarily felt that just kind of would have been a little shoulder pain but it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been noticed um, but then the fluid from my joint started leaking out of the joint because of that cushion being torn and uh, that then blocked off nerves in my shoulders so I wasn't able to lift my arm like this at all and with an event like I do it every little thing like that matters so 
it, it needed to be um, needed to be taken out and fixed and everything for that and surgery. Jeez, uh, I think uh, with gymnastics, uh, from anything I've ever seen on it in documentaries, athletes are constantly living with injuries and stuff like that, and um, they have very high uh, pain threshold. Uh, is that something that you sort of see in the sport? Because so, from what I've seen, a lot of people like almost hide their injuries so how they you know, can continue to compete. Yeah, and you know that's something that some athletes have to do, uh, and that is actually a shame because a, a good governing body and a good uh, management team around you would be able to facilitate that. But I have heard of stories of people having to hide injuries to be selected onto the team because if there's any doubts, then they won't select them. You know, so I, I'm very grateful that I have got a good governing body and good management team around me. That if I say I, I'm a little bit injured here, they'll be like, okay, we'll sort it out. Um, like, and it's it's almost in my hands to to whether or not compete or you know you know compete. Um, but people are in an unfortunate position where they don't have that choice. Yeah, but you see, that's people's dreams as well, you know. Um, another question that I have for you as well. Uh, how important has it been training under Luke Carson as well? Oh, I wouldn't be where I am without Luke. Um, I started with Luke when I was 14. Um, just when he started, when because he, he retired in 2014 from gymnastics yeah. and uh, went straight into coaching. And, you know, I, I was currently training without a coach at the time. So it was almost a no brainer just to go to Luke and and see how things went and from there like I just skyrocketed then that year after that that's when that British Championships happened um, you know the following year I won Ireland's first ever European Championship medal um, yeah. next year even better and even better and even better and I'm where I am now um, and that's all because of Luca I think what sort of relationship would you have would it be like brothers or father son in a way or yeah we would have a, we'd have a very close relationship um I'd say cousins might be a good one to describe it, but so we we always knew each other. I, I knew him uh, when I was a young gymnast. He trained in the same gym, and then he moved away to England to train for a bit. But we always knew each other, so we already had a had a bond when I first went to, to train under his eye. Um, and then yeah, he's just he's such a fun guy. He's he's thirty now, I think, so still pretty young, and yeah. we've we've got that good relationship. That's cool. And Reese. Uh... One thing I saw when you were younger, you were representing Northern Ireland, and now you represent Ireland. Was there ever much of a decision whether when you're going to the Olympics, whether you're going to represent the UK or whether you're going to represent Ireland? I know with the golf, uh, another county down man, uh, Rory McIlroy, had massive controversy over that. Did you feel pressure from that, or was it an easy choice for you? No, it was a very easy choice. Um, the reason I went with Ireland was because uh, Gymnastics Ireland, the governing body that, uh, that gymnastics is under, uh, they always supported me from day one. You know, I was going to their national championships. They they saw my talent very early. Um, and then, you know, they, they're doing big things. I, I love seeing, um, you know, governing bodies and sports growing like that and seeing them do everything possible. So I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to be a part of them growing in a sense and bringing gymnastics to, to everybody else in the country so it didn't it didn't come to a decision um where i was like okay should i go uk or ireland um i still compete for northern ireland at the commonwealth games um which is, is a great opportunity for me i love doing it and uh it it hits home uh, a bit harder uh for for the people you know that i live around and everything but it's also great to go out there, represent Ireland, represent Gymnastics Ireland, Sport Ireland. and Because I, I'm a product of what they've created, in a sense. And, and that's a very special thing to see. Oh, of course. And in fairness, it's one of those things where when the politics and the religious aspects come in between uh, North and South, you know, I mean, people get very riled up in it because... Roy McIlroy was actually the opposite because he was actually a product of Golf Ireland uh, uh, down in the south in the Republic. But then when he he was pushed on it, he said he actually wanted to play for uh, Great Britain at the time. So it, it is one of those things where, I mean, until you actually hear from the horse's mouth in this case, you don't know where people's allegiances really lie, you know what I mean? 
Uh, but as I said, it's great to hear that you know you grew up through the Irish uh, youth system and you're sticking with the Irish youth system. But of course, you also want to represent Northern Ireland when you get the chance as well, which is phenomenal. But yeah, I, I mean, everybody's got their own reasons. Um, I try to stay away from politics because I don't, mm. I don't think it's got a place to sport. Um, I try to stay away from religion as well. Uh, I, I, because I, I'm not religious in a sense either. So I, the things I, I'm doing, um, I'm doing for the, you know, the individual people, the supporters in Ireland, uh, the very, it's a very evident thing. When I went to world championships last year, you know, there's Irish flags all around the arena. And I was like, I, I was walking out to the competition and saw them Irish flags. And I thought, whoa, this is real. Like this, is, the support from the Irish people is unbelievable. And it matches no other country. You know, the, I'm, in, I'm in Germany at world championships and I'm the first ever Irish gymnast to make a final. Not even Irish people that are holding flags necessarily, but they're just showing the support for the Irish, and I absolutely love that. Yeah. Also, Reese, well, what's, what's what's it like training in Sport Ireland as well? Having like all all the athletes there, and also the former uh, Olympians and soon to be Olympians as well. Yeah, it's a special thing. It's a special thing training alongside them, and it's good to kind of build a rapport with them because when you go out to the Olympic Games, you don't want to be spending your time with strangers, essentially. So it is. It's nice to to learn from their journey as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's very cool to train alongside them all. Is there anyone you, you look up to in particular? Uh, I, I try to get along with the boxers quite a lot. Uh, I love boxing. I love that, that whole, just the whole sport. That's my second favorite sport in gymnastics. And, uh, you know, when I talk to the boxers, I can relate a lot with them. I love their mentality, their their champion mindsets, and that's something that I, I can take to my training gym as well when I talk to them. Yeah, and also with the Olympics coming up as well, I saw that uh, on the podium in the World Champions, the last two, Matt, Matt Willock and also Lee Chi Kai, those two are yes. previous Olympics experience. Um, like, are, you, are you in any way intimidated, or does that drive you more to actually like be both of them next time around? Yeah, not at all. It doesn't intimidate me. I showed that I can perform under pressure situations. The Commonwealth Games 2018, I, I beat Max fair and square. You know, we both done our best routine and I came out on top. So and that, that was when I was 18. Um, that I had no Commonwealth Games experience. I'd had no experience even competing in a final against them, I don't think. So I think that shocked the world when I'd done that. And yeah. then after that, I then went and won European Championships. So that just shows that I wasn't a one-hit wonder as well. I, I could perform yeah. even being deemed as one of the best in the final. Uh, well, the best. I qualified first into the final and then came out on top. So, again, that's another pressure situation that I was able to handle. Uh, so I don't doubt myself at all in that way. Uh, I love Reese. Um, I know, obviously, the Olympics was the next thing to look forward to. But now that that's been postponed, what or where should people look out for you for your next event? Uh, I mean, it, it's a hard one to to pinpoint there because a lot of the events have already, well, I mean, all of the events have been cancelled this year, essentially. So I don't know when the next one's going to be. Um, of course, I'll try to, I'll definitely try to be in competitions before Olympics because you need to keep that, uh, keep that going and keep the, you, you know, competition mode uh, in there. Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, that that's what I want to be doing. So, uh, there, there could be one at the end of this year, but uh, it's, it's not certain. But I'll definitely be doing stuff for Olympic Games. That's great, Reese. Thanks, a minute, thanks, a minute for coming on, and we're, we're really looking forward to seeing no you in worries. action again. It's going to be fantastic, Ross. You've been there so much. Oh, Reese, uh, I just look forward to seeing you compete. Um, the times I've seen you compete so far, I'm just like, well, absolutely incredible. Like, just uh, I always thought um, gymnasts are the best athletes in the world, and my favourite athlete of all time is actually uh, George St. Pierre. I don't know if you know him. He's a mixed martial yes, artist. Yes. Yeah. And like he trains gymnastics all the time. And he says like that's the reason he's better than everyone. Uh, so like I have so much respect for what you do. And you know, you'll, be, you'll soon be uh, the pride of Ireland. Like look at what happened with KG Taylor when she went off and won Olympic gold. You know what I mean? Like yeah, do yeah. that in the world as your oyster, man. So just keep up the Thank hard work. Thank you very much. Yeah. I really appreciate the support, guys. Uh, no everyone, worries. everyone make sure to be following Reese uh, on his journey to Olympic gold uh, make sure to like subscribe and as always stay energized stay energized